My name's Aaron Massey and welcome to Woodshop 101. The goal with this series is to help get you familiarized with some common woodworking tools and practices and help you expand your skills and knowledge as you build out and expand your workshop. On today's episode, we're gonna look at the difference and uses for two common woodworking tools, the planer versus the jointer. Both of these tools carry a fairly hefty price tag and many beginners or intermediate level woodworkers may not have either tool. But before you go and spend the money to buy one, it's important to know exactly what each tool is used for and how it works. Now, both of these are preparation tools, meaning that they are used at the beginning of a woodworking project to help you get flat, uniform wood to work with. If you're just starting out, you may be using whatever construction lumber you can get your hands on from the big box store, or you may be spending quite a bit of money on pre-milled hardwoods that you picked up from a local specialty store. In either case, the projects you work on are limited to the material that you buy. These tools can help you create wood projects in any size or thickness that you want. Now, it's very rare that wood you purchase doesn't have some kind of warp or movement to it. For the sake of this video, I'm showing you three common types of wood warp you may encounter. Bowing is when a board has a bend in it so it doesn't lie flat. A twist is when the board won't sit flat on all four corners corners so that when you press on one corner, the board rocks back and forth. And cupping is when the board has a cupped shape where the sides are higher or lower than the inner part of the board. Depending on the piece of wood you're working with, it may have one or all of these attributes, and if any of them are severe, it can make working with the piece very challenging. Think of woodworking like cooking in the kitchen and the wood is your ingredient. When you have quality ingredients, it's easy to create a quality finished meal without a lot of extra steps and things added on top. Woodworking is the exact same way. When you have nice, flat, and uniform lumber, it's much easier to create a quality finished product. And that is where a jointer and a planer come in. Now, a common misconception is that a planer makes a board flat when in reality, a planer is only used to make a board uniform thickness. So first, let's take a look at how a planer works. If we were to remove the side of the planer and got a look at the inside, here's what we would see. We'd see two feed rollers. These rollers apply downward pressure onto the piece of wood so that it stays flat along the bottom of the planer, while at the same time feeding it through the planer itself. We'd also find our cutter head. Now there's different cutter head types available, but they all do the same thing. It's a cylinder that spins at extremely high RPMs and cuts the wood as it's fed through the machine. So let's take a look at how that works with a piece of wood. As you can see, the wood is fed through the machine. The roller heads press down onto the piece of wood, pushing it down along the deck as the blades cut it to a uniform thickness. Now let's see what happens if we do this with a piece of wood that has a bow in it. As you can see, as the piece is fed through the machine, the rollers press down on the piece of wood and it follows the bow. So while you'll end up with a piece of wood that's uniform thickness, it won't be flat. If you flip the piece over and feed it through the machine, the rollers will push down on the bow and flatten it out as it goes through the machine. But as it comes out the other side, the board will spring back to its original shape. So while your board will be uniform thickness, it still won't be flat. The same can mostly be said for a board with a twist in it. As the board is fed through the machine, while it may take a little bit of the twist out, the rollers will push down on the board and it will follow whatever the opposite face of the board is doing. As it comes out the other side of the machine, the board will be a uniform thickness, but it won't be flat. The one scenario where a planer can produce a flat surface is if the piece has a cup in it. Depending on the severity of the cupping, you may be able to plane down enough of one side of the board to achieve a flat surface. However, you may have to feed it through the machine several times and lose a lot of material in order to do that. Once you have that flat surface, you can flip the board over and run it through the machine again and get a flat surface on both sides. But again, you may have to remove a lot of material to do that. So in order for a planer to work effectively, you have to have a flat surface on one side of your boards in the first place, and that's where a joiner comes in. So if we take a look at a jointer, you'll see we have two tabletops that are coplanar to each other an in-feed table and an out-feed table. Now these tables are adjustable in height depending on the depth of the cut we want to make. And we'll also find a cutter head very similar to the cutter head that we have in the planer. Now if we feed that same bowed piece of wood over the jointer, you'll see that if we don't apply too much downward pressure on it, it'll take out that bow. It may take a few passes to do it, but what you'll see is that it creates a flat surface on the bottom of the board. However, it doesn't create a board that's a uniform thickness. So in order to create a board that is both flat and uniform thickness, that is why you have both a jointer and a planer. 
the jointer creates a flat surface for the deck of the planer to reference and create a board of uniform thickness. Well, I hope this video is helpful to you for understanding how a jointer and a planer work and why they are used for specific applications. This video just touches on the surface of what these tools are used for, but if you guys enjoy this series, maybe I'll dive into greater detail later on. Now, if you wanna buy one of these tools, but you're not sure which one, most woodworkers I know tend to start by investing in a planer first, myself included. And in my next video, I'll be showing you how you can create a relatively simple and inexpensive jig for your planer that allows you to achieve similar results to a jointer without the investment. So make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel and hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on that. And if you'd like to check out any more of my woodworking or home improvement content, make sure to visit my website at mrfixitdiy.com and download some of my free woodworking plans. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.